This is Levittown, Pennsylvania, a new suburban community of 60,000 people midway between Philadelphia and Trenton, New Jersey. With its giant shopping center, winding lanes named for flowers and trees, it is fairly typical of communities all over America where families are pursuing the American dream to give their children a better chance in life. Levitt Towners are people of modest means. Nearly all are young people. A large proportion are veterans. There are few social agencies, and while many religious groups have established churches, they have not yet had time enough to develop programs to adequately serve the community. Most Levitt Towners are proud and happy in their new environment. For many, it is the first house of their own, and it represents a major financial investment. Social life is mainly confined to visits with the neighbors. Occasionally, there are community-wide events, but it's too early yet for most residents to become identified with the broader aspects of community living. Levittown was built by one man for whom it is named. Like many community developers, he set the initial policy and provided a minimum of essential services. When the houses were sold, naturally, he went to its own slender resources. In August 1957, Levittown, Pennsylvania, attracted international attention when violence erupted as William Myers, Jr. and his family moved into the three-bedroom house at Daffodil and Deep Green Lane. In almost all respects, the Myers family is close to the Levittown norm. They have three small children, the youngest only one month old. Myers served for two and a half years in the Army and was discharged as a staff sergeant. He works as a laboratory technician and is studying for a degree as an electrical engineer. His wife, Daisy, is a college graduate. The Myers home is modestly furnished and their late model family car was bought on time. They are very close to the Levittown norm except in one respect. William Myers Jr. and his family are Negroes in an all-white community. Levittown reacted in a number of ways to the new arrivals. There were several hundred who congregated on the street in front of the Myers house and there were those among them who felt strongly enough to throw a rock through the picture window. But there was another a large group who were repelled by this kind of behavior and organized to help Levitt Town accept its first Negro neighbors. The vast majority of Levitt Towners went peacefully about their daily activities. But in the stores and at the schools and on the front lawns, Levitt Towners discussed the Myers. Well, I first read a small article in the newspaper that the first colored family had moved into this community. And um, following that, why I began to hear on the radio and read in the newspaper that there was some disturbance around this home that these uh, people had bought. What was your initial reaction? I was terribly shocked to find that there were people in this community who would be so violently opposed to it. I rather thought that everyone would just accept it as I would. Was the community prepared in any way for the entrance of the first Negro family into all white Levitt town? Well, there was an attempt by uh, a group of ministers who formed a group called the Human Relations Council, and they were just getting started on their work. I don't know how they expected to ultimately accomplish the purpose of educating everyone, but I know that they had a, an open forum one time and uh, just within the last three or four months. And the results of it were published in the paper. Do you feel it was effective? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it was just a drop in the bucket. It, uh, not very many people even read or were aware of the article or of the meeting that preceded it. Although there had been little interest in the formation of the Human Relations Council some weeks before, the Myers became the main topic of conversation for the people of Levittown within a few hours of their arrival. In the absence of fact and authoritative information on a situation like this, rumor and gossip sweep through the community. As the stories pass from one person to another, because hardly anybody knows the truth, what everybody is saying becomes the fact. 
Oh, I heard lots of rumors. I was busy <laughs> telling people not to believe them. What kind? Well, that they'd been sponsored chiefly. I think people resented, after they heard this rumor and believed it, they resented feeling that uh, some outside group had deliberately moved these people in, that they were sponsored and paid by an outside group to do this very thing. And uh, I had been told on good authority that that wasn't true at all, and uh, so I told people that it wasn't true. Do you feel that understanding the facts of the situation will help? Oh, yes, I do. I'm sure that uh, a more reasonable attitude is going to prevail in this community, and I I'm, I'm, have great faith in the people here, and that they'll, uh, they'll soon find out there's nothing to be afraid of. Some view the incident calmly and indicate acceptance of the fact. But for others, the Myers moving into Levittown constitutes an infringement of their own liberties. And under the impact of this situation, they react with anger and force. What they say reveals their deepest fears and frustrations. Why did you select Levittown to live? We were looking for a place to buy a home. We looked at Levittown, and we liked the homes here. We liked the advantages that Levittown seemed to offer in uh, comparison to other cities. And we understood that it was going to be all white, and we were very happy to buy a home here. How about your children? Have you talked with them about the Myers? We have tried to keep uh, the discussions away from the children. Uh, I, figure, I, I feel that it's something that uh, we adults should solve without bringing the children into it any more than we have to. We're doing it for the children, but I don't feel that they are old enough to understand the problem as it is. Do you think a Negro family moving here will affect the community as a whole? Definitely. In what way? I think that, well, the property values will immediately go down if uh, they are allowed to move in here in any number. Can you give a basis for that judgment? Yes, we used to live in Washington, D.C., and we saw a very good example of that there. The repetition of an experience that was distasteful. Is there to be no escape from living near Negroes? And what of the dream of middle-class respectability? If a Negro family can afford what you can afford, how do you justify your feeling of superiority? The illogic of one's own position becomes apparent and in self-justification, the old tribal myths are invoked. What other objections, aside from the effect on property values, do you have against the Myers? The whole thing centers around the word integration. Well, as Mr. Myers said, because his home has been anything but peaceful since he moved in. He's got three children, and uh, evidently he feels that they will be accepted socially. And uh, I don't feel that they ever will be. But the whole trouble with this integration business is that uh, in the end, it probably will end up with, with mixing socially. And you will have, well, I think their aim is mixed marriages and becoming equal with the whites. But the only way they're going to do that is by education and by bettering themselves, not by pushing in the way they have here. Do you intend to move? At the time, no. It's a pretty impossible situation. We have, uh, we have our home here, and if the colored move in and run real estate values down, there are a lot of us, the GIs particularly, who are going to be more or less stuck with their homes. As the lines are drawn, those on either side become more adamant. Tension develops and feeds on suspicion and mistrust. What has been the effect of the Myers coming here? Well, it's, it's created a great deal of tension, not uh, among the neighbors, because we all feel the same. But uh, it's naturally made everyone tense in their home. I mean, this, this is affecting our homes. And uh, it's bound to create tension. It's the subject that's talked about all the time. But there are others who are for the Myers? Yes, I've read about them. For what reason, do you think, do they support the Myers? Frankly, I don't know what reasons they can have for it. If they are homeowners in Levittown, I don't see what reasons they can have for it. Do you think Myers will be able to live here comfortably? 
comfortably? No. What course of action are you going to follow? I'll do what I can uh, to help to, to get them out legally and peacefully. And as far as accepting them socially, if that's what you mean, I could never do that. To take sides in such a situation is more than a matter of one's own conscience. What a man believes becomes a subject for community debate. For those who believe a man has a right to live anywhere he wishes, the answers are simple and straightforward. Has this affected your relationship with neighbors? No, we've discussed it freely. We've found people for and against, but we've tried to keep, uh, keep it being discussed. That was the important thing. Have you heard any rumors? Many, many. I won't repeat them because I don't like to repeat rumors, and I don't think it's fair to keep them alive. Do you think rumors contributed to the reaction of those opposing the Myers? Uh, surely they did, but uh, we had some very interested citizens here who uh, pledged themselves to a fact-finding group, and they tried to dissolve those rumors as quickly as they were started by facts. Do you think the Myers will be able to live comfortably in Levittown? I think so. I hope so. I think the majority of people here will uh, grow accustomed to it and uh, realize that, oh, they, are, they can be good neighbors, which I'm sure they are. And uh, I think the majority of people here are not vi the violent, um, well, violent group that we have heard so much about. Do you think the Myers staying in Levittown will affect property values? Uh, I don't think that the Myers have anything to do with the um, property decreasing or increasing. I think it's purely a white problem, not a Negro problem. In what way? I think it is the feeling of uh, the majority group which will influence the property, not the minority group. Those who want an integrated community take their stand based on their own deep feelings of what a community should be. Do you feel that the Myers will lead to large numbers of other Negroes coming here? No, I don't think so. I think that um, there will be a, probably a normal um, entrance and uh, not a deluge. I mean, people who, who want these homes will come here. It's not um, what people say that, um, oh, in flux. There won't be any such thing. There'll be a normal, I, I hope. I hope, and because uh, I would like to see an integrated group here, and I would like to see, uh, well, my child, and I hope my children go to uh, and live in a group that is representative of the world, and uh, not being an integrated group, it is, it is not now a representative of society. Um, of course, we've all discussed this, and we've all said that the um, answer to the problem is eventually when you find that there are no more areas to which a white person can move without uh, having a Negro family in. Well, that would be the, the best uh, end that there could be to uh, segregation. And it is probably um, something that will happen in the future, perhaps in the near future. For some, the answer is tremendously complicated, tied up in a maze of past associations and present influences. Sometimes opinions are expressed with grave misgivings and a sense of guilt. The past slips through despite what is said. Being for Myers can be difficult if one's back at once. But I know that they had a, an open forum one time, and uh, just within the last three or four months, and the results of it were published in the paper. Do you feel it was effective? No, I'm afraid it was just a drop in the bucket. It, uh, not very many people even read or were aware of the article or of the meeting that preceded it. Although there had been little interest in the formation of the Human Relations Council some weeks before, the Myers became the main topic of conversation for the people of Levittown within a few hours of their arrival. In the absence of fact and authoritative information on a situation like this, rumor and gossip sweep through the community. As the stories pass from one person to another, 
because hardly anybody knows the truth. What everybody is saying becomes the fact. Oh, I heard lots of rumors. I was busy <laughs> telling people not to believe them. What kind? Well, that they had been sponsored chiefly. I think people resented, after they heard this rumor and believed it, they resented feeling that uh, some outside group had deliberately moved these people in, that they were sponsored and paid by an outside group to do this very thing. And uh, I had been told on good authority that that wasn't true at all, and uh, so I told people that it wasn't true. Do you feel that understanding the facts of the situation will help? Oh, yes, I do. I'm sure that uh, a more reasonable attitude is going to prevail in this community, and I I'm, I'm, have great faith in the people here, and that they'll, uh, they'll soon find out there's nothing to be afraid of. Some view the incident calmly and indicate... But I know that they had a, an open forum one time, and uh, just within the last three or four months, and the results of it were published in the paper. Do you feel it was effective? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it was just a drop in the bucket. It, uh, not very many people even read or were aware of the article or of the meeting that preceded it. Although there had been little interest in the formation of the Human Relations Council some weeks before, the Myers became the main topic of conversation for the people of Levittown within a few hours of their arrival. In the absence of fact and authoritative information on a situation like this, rumor and gossip sweep through the community. As the stories pass from one person to another, because hardly anybody knows the truth, what everybody is saying becomes the fact. Oh, I heard lots of rumors. I was busy <laughs> telling people not to believe them. What kind? Well, that they had been sponsored chiefly. I think people resented after they heard this rumor and believed it, they resented feeling that uh, some outside group had deliberately moved these people in, that they were sponsored and paid by an outside group to do this very thing. And uh, I had been told on good authority that that wasn't true at all, and uh, so I told people that it wasn't true. Do you feel that understanding the facts of the situation will help? Oh, yes, I do. I'm sure that... Uh, a more reasonable attitude is going to prevail in this community, and I'm, I'm have great faith in the people here, and that they'll, uh, they'll soon find out there's nothing to be afraid of. Some view the incident calmly and indicate acceptance of the fact, but for others, the Myers moving into Levittown constitutes an infringement of their own liberties, and under the impact of this situation, they react with anger and force. What they say reveals their deepest fears and frustrations. Why did you select Levittown to live? We were looking for a place to buy a home. We looked at Levittown, and we liked the homes here. We liked the advantages that Levittown seemed to offer in uh, comparison to other cities. And we understood that it was going to be all white, and we were very happy to buy a home here. How about your children? Have you talked with them about the Myers? We have tried to keep uh, the discussions away from the children. Uh, I, figure, I, I feel that it's something that uh, we adults should solve without bringing the children into it any more than we have to. We're doing it for the children. But I don't feel that they are old enough to understand the problem as it is. Do you think a Negro family moving here will affect the community as a whole? Definitely. In what way? I think that, well, the property values will immediately go down if uh, they are allowed to move in here in any number. Can you give a basis for that judgment? Yes, we used to live in Washington, D.C., and we saw a very good example of that there. The repetition of an experience that was distasteful. Is there to be no escape from living near Negroes? And what of the dream of middle-class respectability? If a Negro family can afford what you can afford, how do you justify your feeling of superiority? The illogic of one's own position becomes apparent, and in self-justification, the old tribal... But I know that they had a, an open forum one time, and uh, just within the last three or four months, and the results of it were published in the paper. Do you feel it was effective? No, I'm afraid it was just a drop in the bucket. It, uh, 
Not very many people even read or were aware of the article or of the meeting. It's mixed marriages, and that's eventually what it's going to come to. If children are raised together, they're not going to think of anything of marrying together. Well, I just could not live beside them. I don't feel that they should be oppressed. But I moved here. One of the main reasons was because it was a white community. And that's the only place I intend to live. If I have to leave Levittown, I will do so. For some Levittowners, the basic issues involved had nothing to do with intermarriage or property values, loss of status, fear of crime, neighborhood decline, or of being in the minority. They saw it as a test of democracy. What was your reaction to the Myers moving in? Well, I was happy to see this become more of an American community. There seems to be a large group opposed to the Myers. What would be your attitude toward them? Well, I would divide. I don't know if there are large groups of people opposed to the Myers. After all, we have some, I don't know, I guess close to 60,000 people in Levittown. Those mobs are never more than five or 600. And I think if you'd gone down to the shopping center any night, at the time the mobs were here, you would have seen 10,000 people at the shopping center while the, those who were violently opposed to Myers moving in were engaging in what they were engaging in. You don't think, then, that a large majority is against Myers moving in? Well, that's not true offhand. I know some of the immediate neighbors right here who uh, were for the Myers moving in. I wouldn't hazard a guess of what the proportion are that welcomes it's mixed marriages, and that's eventually what it's going to come to. If children are raised together, they're not going to think of anything of marrying together. Well, I just could not live beside them. I don't feel that they should be oppressed. But I moved here, one of the main reasons was because it was a white community. And that's the only place I intend to live. If I have to leave Levittown, I will do so. For some Levittowners, the basic issues involved had nothing to do with intermarriage or property values, loss of status, fear of crime, neighborhood decline, or of being in the minority. They saw it as a test of democracy. What was your reaction to the Myers moving in? Well, I was happy to see this become more of an American community. There seems to be a large group opposed to the Myers. What would be your attitude toward them? Well, I would divide. I don't know if there are large groups of people opposed to the Myers. After all, we have some, I don't know, I guess close to 60,000 people in Levittown. Those mobs are never more than five or 600. And I think if you'd gone down to the shopping center any night, at the time the mobs were here, you would have seen 10,000 people at the shopping center while the, those who were violently opposed to Myers moving in were engaging in what they were engaging in. You don't think, then, that a large majority is against Myers moving in? Well, that's not true offhand. I know some of the immediate neighbors right here who uh, were for the Myers moving in. I wouldn't hazard a guess of what the proportion is that welcomes the Myers and how and what proportion is opposed to it, but I don't think that's the main issue involved in this case anyway. What is the main issue? The main issue is the right of these people to live like Americans as they choose and to be accepted as good neighbors. What are you going to do about it? I intend to try to be a good neighbor. Do you feel that the Myers coming to Levittown will lead to large numbers of other Negroes coming here? I, I don't know. Do you think the Myers will be able to live here comfortably? I. I think it'll take a little time, but they will eventually. Have you heard any rumors about the Myers? Oh, dozens and dozens of rumors. What kind? Oh, that he was being paid by the NAACP, that the Reds were behind it, that the Jews were behind it, that this group and that group was behind it. Uh, there were all kinds of rumors. I guess some of them were being spread deliberately. Some were just a result of hysteria. Uh, there was all kinds of malicious rumor. There were some of them were so ridiculous you would you couldn't see how people could accept them. But in the atmosphere, some people did accept them and spread them. What course do you think the future of Levittown will take? Well, I'll tell you. I don't think Levittown's an island. It's part of the USA, and I think it's going to integrate like the rest of this country's going to integrate. In Levittown, as elsewhere in America, 
There are those who believe that the rights and privileges of citizenship belong to all, regardless of their race or color or creed. And there are those who believe in equality, too, but in a somewhat more limited sense. In my business, whoever's got money and has good credit or wants to pay cash can buy a car. Uh, it has no discrimination, color, religion, or any type of that sort. Has the coming of the Myers affected your home life? Personally, my home life, it hasn't affected nothing whatsoever. But on the neighbors, they have a right. Because the average white person living in Levittown has four and five children. Well, let's put it this way. If the Levittown has migrated in hordes of Negroes, which they have a right to come here, but if something had happened that way, pretty soon my neighbor will be having a Negro son-in-law or a uh, daughter-in-law. How would that look? Wasn't Myers within his rights as a citizen to move wherever he pleased? Well, let's put it this way. Mr. Myers and all the Negroes have a uh, right. I'm no better than them. They're as good as I am. They can go anywhere they want. I mean, they have uh, God-given rights, and, uh, and being a good American, they have the rights to the civil rights. They have the right to pursuit of happiness. But by the same token, we have uh, mixed communities, and it's a proven fact that those mixed communities are over a third empty. He could have stayed there. He had a beautiful home there. The only reason that Mr. Myers came into Levittown is to show people they could get here. It wasn't that he wanted to come to Levittown, but my personal opinion is this. There is something bigger behind this. Is that your personal opinion only, or is it a fact? No, I say it's a fact. And I would tell anybody, I mean, uh, barn nobody, I would tell them in a meeting, including uh, the gentleman at this, uh, the head of this uh, committee for bringing Mr. Myers here, I'd tell him. When did you first hear of Myers moving in? I heard uh, about Mr. Myers. I was having uh, coffee in a restaurant where he worked as a utility man, dishwasher, I don't know. It was supposed to be a part-time job, but I've seen him there at 7 in the morning till 9 at night. And then the paper says he was an engineer. Where did you hear it? That's where I heard it, from the waitresses in there. They asked me, did you see your new neighbors? And I didn't care to discuss it in public. What did you do? I didn't do anything. There you have it. An American community caught suddenly in a moment of crisis. Neighbors set against neighbors as they differ on what should be done about one Negro and his family who have come to share with them the American dream of a better way of life for their children. Many seem convinced that property values must decline when a community or a neighborhood becomes integrated. But studies which have been made prove the opposite to be true. Property values go up, provided there is no wave of panic selling. And even when there is panic, after the situation is stabilized, prices climb back and frequently go even higher than they were when the initial sale to a Negro was made. Does the integration of Negroes into a white community result in a higher rate of crime, violence, or juvenile delinquency? Not at all. Negroes living in predominantly white communities show a lower incidence of crime than the average for the general population. Is intermarriage the ultimate goal of Negroes in seeking to integrate into previously white communities? The studies show that of all the reasons Negroes have for seeking equality of opportunity, intermarriage is the least. And of all the fears that whites express, this is the greatest. Negroes seek only the right to buy or rent the kind of housing on the open market which they can afford. This basic principle of the free enterprise system, of which we're justly proud, is now denied to them in many communities. The exclusion of Negroes from white communities and their restriction to all Negro neighborhoods fixes negative ideas about them which are carried over from generation to generation. These false notions cause the abandonment by the white population of large areas within our great cities at a tremendous cost to the nation. Aided by a prosperous post-war economy, Negroes have held fast to their wartime gains and have sought to improve their lot in life. Advances against discrimination have been made in many fields. A new and much larger Negro middle class has grown up. Able, ambitious, and confident, these families are determined to leave the old, densely packed, segregated neighborhoods 
and they're economically able to do it. They have the money to buy their way out of the slums. What happened in Levittown is merely the beginning of what is to follow in communities all over the country during the next few years, as Negroes, like all other Americans, get better education, better jobs, and accumulate more savings. Can we prepare our communities to receive these new neighbors in dignity and peace? Or will we wreck our communities with violence and abandon them in panic? This is the challenge posed for us as Levittowners sum it up for themselves. I don't think you can take a middle of the stand here. Either you're for them or against them. I've taken a stand for, for peace and nonviolence and no intimidation of the Myerses. I don't have any prejudice uh, against uh, colored. It's just that I wouldn't like to have one as a neighbor. We would act to them as we would act to any other neighbors. We would be friendly towards them and, and speak to them and visit with them. I wouldn't care to live in the community where the Negroes would be living. I think that the majority of people here will accept things and uh, believe, as I believe, that a good neighbor is not one whose color is white or black, just as a good citizen is such. Mr. Myers and all the Negroes have a uh, right. I'm no better than them. They're as good as I am. But the only reason that Mr. Myers came into Levittown is to show people they could get here. I, I just feel that they're within their legal rights to move in here. And if they move in, they're law-abiding citizens. I have no complaints. If more colored are allowed to move in, Levittown is going to go downhill. I don't think that the Myers have anything to do with the property decreasing or increasing. I think it's purely a white problem, not a Negro problem. The main issue is the right of these people to live like Americans as they choose, to be accepted as good neighbors.